How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday. And like I said yesterday, I know it's a later show. Give me a break. We're starting up the new studio, and things are starting to move. So this might be the first New York studio show that you're watching. We're setting it up. We're prepping stuff up. Yeah, we know. The wall looks like a prison. Clever. We're, uh, we're coming up with some more stuff. We're adding lights. We're doing more things to it. We're building it out. Brett's literally building it right now as we shoot. But we're going to do a full capes and cows today. Me, Winston, and Coy. And we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, man. X-Men 97, it wraps up. Was it the best series Marvel has ever done? Uh, there's some MC rumors, whether it's stuff with Hawkeye, and there's Spider-Man rumors. There's casting rumors. Ryan Gosling addressed the whole ghost, uh, ghost face killer. No, he didn't. Uh, not ghost face killer. That would be an interesting one. That wouldn't go well if he played ghost face, ghost face killer. But he did play the, 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 whatever, the ghost rider guy. I got it. I got there. Uh, Zach Efron rumored to be doing something in the MCU. Deadpool and Wolverine stuff. And Daredevil, pretty much confirmation from the cast that said that before they decided to reboot, it had no ties to the Netflix series at all. So that's a lot of stuff, man. So if you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, how about you subscribe? That's all you got to do is you got to hit that button. If you've been tuning into this show and you haven't subscribed yet, well, then I think the, the answer is that you're dead to me. Is that right? I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But if we're being too harsh, then that's fine. Then Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. It is Capes and Cows. It's me. It's Winston and Skoy. Here it is. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It is Capes and Cows, Christian Harloff, Winston A. Marshall, Koi Jandro and a cat named Spidey, and of course, all of us here in our first New York show. We did it, guys. Bam! Yeah. You already know what it is. That's right. I'm not even going to say the thing that I said before we started the show. I'm no. not going to do it. Well, you're gonna, were you going to say the Knicks are going to win? Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> Damn, you've been getting back in the stand up. I'm proud of you. I think you. You've been killing it. Thank you. I appreciate that. But <laughs> I wore their shirt today because it represents the East Coast. This is a New York based. There it is. Spidey's here to rep New York. Spidey Cat, we're all here. Yeah, everybody's this is in honor of the great city and pizza. That's right. And so it's good to be back. It's good to have us all back here, too. And the idea that, look, we are going to be doing our show. Um, we are going to be doing here. We're going to have a couple more shows where we're going to be all in studio. And then we're going to be able to do it. Like, so this is the thing I love about this new program is that you got all of us. So if you want to see me, you got me. You want to see Winston, you got Winston. You want to see Koi, you got Koi. You want to see all of us together. Look at that. All, all of us together at once. Um, so we had a lot to talk about, guys, because there's a, as I said in the title of this, the question now lies, and I think we've talked about it once before, but now that X-Men 97 has officially wrapped, is it the best show Marvel has ever done because we had the conversation when it was like two or three or four in, but now it's wrapped. Season one is wrapped. So I ask you guys, and I'll start with you, Winston, on this, is that question one, is it the best show that Marvel has ever done? And then I'll also give you a maybe a, a maybe more complicated question. Is it the best season of television that Marvel has ever done or neither? What say you? I would say that it is... Definitely the best season. I'll give that. I think the one thing working against it is just the fact that Daredevil has had multiple seasons. And therefore, you, I, in my opinion, you're always going to give more credence to uh, whether it be athletes, TV shows, whatever. Something that's longer in that regard and has run its full course. If this was all the show was then you can make the argument, okay, we don't see anything else coming out of this, but it, but Daredevil did, what, three seasons, and they're technically mm -hmm. going to have a kind of fourth soft reboot type situation. But if you're talking pound for pound, just a straight season, I honestly don't believe it's close. I think that this ran away with it. Uh, it started to take a lead at Remember It, episode five, and I think it really closed it out. I know some people have various things that they're upset about with the end of it. I think that it is so hard to stick landings, and this did so exceptionally well, in my opinion, that it's going to be very hard for, in, in my opinion, for anything else to touch it. And I honestly think so far, not only is it the best TV show of 2024, The Boys, The Bear, House of the Dragon, they're all going to have to come 
legit to try and unseat it, at least in my mind. All right, Corey, same question for you, man. It's like, because you've seen, you've seen it all. You've seen the uh, every Marvel show, every MCU show. Uh, so, and I know you're a big X-Men guy also, and you've been loving this show. Same two questions. Question one, is it the best it, Marvel show? And is it the best season of Marvel television? I am a huge X-Men fan, but I got to be totally honest about my connection to the shows prior. And I think that is my third favorite of the shows and is third favorite of the seasons, just to mm. be full transparent. I'm going to give it to Loki season two is my favorite um, show season. But I honestly think the only thing that beats that is Daredevil season two. So Daredevil season two is number one. Loki season two is number two. This is number three as far as season. And really trickily, uh, I would say that because of some of the things I didn't love in Daredevil season three, Loki is actually my number one show. And then Daredevil is my number two show. And then Lo and then X-Men mm -hmm. as an entity is my number three show. So it's, it's a slight reverse order with one and two, but it is my number three in both categories. I think that both uh, Loki and X-Men have an episode that I didn't think was as strong as the rest of the season, which mm -hmm. is in both cases, I think uh, like episode four, um, the episode in Loki where we all agreed that we uniquely all agreed. Oh, was it two? I think you're right. It was for, Lo it was for Loki. It was two. two. It was episode and, two. And I'm talking about the Motendo episode for yeah. X-Men. You didn't like the Motendo episode. I didn't love it. I liked it. I thought it was a great episode, but it's not on par with Loki or on par with the rest of the season. So I would say it's, it's a dip from like an A to a B. And mm. I think they both share that B dip because I didn't hate episode two of Loki, but mm. I now have a moment I can go, eh, and I don't have that for Daredevil. I, I don't have a single episode in seasons one or two of Daredevil that I find like a singular dip. Mm. Um, so for me, they're not quite that strong. But mm. as far as seasons go, that's a tiny problem. And it's still like there's what, 100 Marvel shows probably. Yeah, there's a lot. I, I The only thing I was going to push back on for me personally, and this is just my opinion, I think what did it for me with the Motendo slash Life Death Part 1 is both, A, obviously, they split up Storm's story into two episodes, more or less, with uh, with her main story be, being her trying to refine herself, more or less. Um, and then, B, I think the fact that Jubilee not only got an important life lesson, but that came back up in the finale as far as she's not just someone who just kind of shoots little sparkles at somebody, but she realized that her powers can evolve and get stronger. The whole point of that episode was about her growing. And because there was a payoff to it, I actually give it more credence versus that episode of Loki. I don't like what the flaws we had. There wasn't like a payoff to the flaws, if that, make, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get what you're but saying. But that's just me. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And I think that... When I look at this show overall, I mean, I think that we're all going to be saying the same thing, though, which is any one of those shows that we, in any ranking that you guys just gave, I don't think there's, you could push back and go, wow, you're crazy for giving that ranking. I completely understand it. And, and I think, Winston, you would even say it, too, that I think one of the things inside of the X-Men as of right now is that it's that you are in the... Um, the honeymoon phase uh, of X Men sure. right now, right? And, and it's like, and it's recency bias, and it's all that, and that's and that's that's fair when you're so jacked up on in the same way that when I walked out of Furiosa, I was like, oh, you know, oh my god, I just want to, <laughs> I want to see Furiosa again, and is it as good as Mad Max? And I, and I sat back and I was like, I don't think I like it as Mad Ma as much as Mad Max, and I, I don't, but I, I like being in that world and I like that. I'm not saying that you are not going to have this this same opinion in a, a year from now. You very well could. Um, but I'm also in the uh, on the boat of like this is just such a very well made show and what it got what it did for everybody was it got everybody excited for the X Men again and you were already pumped for them because you just want to see them and you were like I just want to see it done right well this is doing it right this is doing it right. it is showing you the capacity of what the X Men are capable of not only as actual heroes but actually the show itself and that's why I was excited however I will say that I think I'm going to side more on Koi's rankings. Um, because of my initial point, and that's only yeah. because of the idea of, like those shows meant so much, and as you marinated with them in my head, they got better and better. Now I do not, and I won't ever agree on Star Wars rankings, but that's a different story. It's a different topic. Empire, uh, Jedi, the rest, and by Jedi I mean last, not Return of. Did you you said Empire first? Yeah. What? And then who the are Jedi. you? Who are you? This Empire's is, been first. Last Jedi's just been second. You're Me a liar. You're a, you're a filthy Check liar. 
You're a f- Check the I'm pretty seats. sure he did say that. It's just that you don't like his last Jedi as second. Yeah, I, See, I think I would... you get mad by the second part and you forget the first was always Empire. Like you're a filthy liar. Um, but <laughs> but either way, I'm on your I'm on the same page when it comes to the rank because both Daredevil uh, and Loki season two were just phenomenal. And when it comes to the multiverse stuff, I mean, I'm when multiverse is done right and time is done right, you're gonna get me. And there's this show that I'm watching right now on Apple. This is Dark Matter show with Joel Edgerton and Jennifer Connelly, which is the same type of thing, and it's just handled well. I'm on board. You got me. When it's good writing, I'm on board. X Men is good writing. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that none, whatever, whatever ranking you do, wherever you put it, whether you think, do I now? I'll answer my own question. So I think it is the best Marvel show that they've ever done. No, do I think that it puts out the best season? It's in the conversation. It's in the conversation because the other thing that really good TV shows do is water cooler, water cooler moments, get people excited about it, get people amped up and continuously waiting for it week in, week out, um, and also start to compare other shows and telling you, oh, I wish you would have done what X-Men 97 did and done week to week, and I heard that often. So it's in the conversation. I think, I'm, I don't know want to put it as number one, though, but it's in the conversation. I think the other thing to keep into consideration with it, obviously for us that are a little bit deeper into the, you know, the, this franchise, this this uh, company as a whole and what they're doing, I think Loki reinvigorated a lot of us as far as, okay, the MCU is kind of riding the ship a little bit. I think the big difference maker that X-Men 97 did, X-Men 97 brought not only the people that like have been following the Marvel and what they've been doing the last few years, you brought people that like really haven't messed with superheroes since they were kids. Now all of a sudden they're talking about it. Now all of a sudden you have people that don't mess with it at all that were getting involved. We're like, no, 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 no. Remember that thing we did the night? Like they're doing this, this, and this. And I think that's the one differentiation is that X-Men 97 when you look at how Marvel has been faltering pretty hard and we've been looking at, uh uh-oh, is there superhero fatigue? Are we done here? Now, all of a sudden, people are super amped up. Well, the only pushback, Winston, that I have there is I think that you're right when it comes to inside of our circle and when it comes to, I think you're absolutely right, the people that used to watch it and knew that it was coming out and hadn't watched superhero stuff in a while said, oh, I used to like that as a kid. I wonder if this is any good. And they just kind of get that... Uh, as you said, reju- they're rejuvenated. They're they're watching it. They're excited. They want to see more of it. Oh, check out this other Marvel stuff. What I don't think it necessarily crosses into is bringing people who normally a don't watch animation, b just you know you look at something like Avengers. Avengers brought in everybody, like everybody. That's why it's one of the most uh, profitable movies of all time. I don't know if this pulled it pulled people in. Just because the, in the way that nobody knew what Game of Thrones was when it came out, right? Uh-huh. And then when people started, when the word started spreading how good it was, more and more people who didn't know, had know the books or anything watched Game of Thrones. I don't think that happened with X-Men for 97. I, I would also argue that Daredevil did a similar thing to what Winston is describing. I do think this brought in some Fairweather fans and yeah. some people that had left it behind. Yeah. But I also think that Daredevil allowed an entire universe to exist in Netflix that thrived for almost a decade or like what, seven years? Like it went between mm-hmm. all the Daredevil stuff, the Defender stuff, Punisher, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. That wouldn't have happened without Daredevil. So I feel like Daredevil was a launching point on TV while, you know, Cap, Thor, and Iron Man obviously launched on movies. So I just, I think that, that X-Men is absolutely in that conversation, but it's been 10 years next year since Daredevil and it's still wow. a saved, yeah. And that I feel old. Someone tagged me in that saying that when Daredevil drops, it's going to be the 10 year anniversary of it dropping on Netflix. And wow. I had to, you know, schedule my colonoscopy. Uh, but yeah, it scares the crap out of me that it's been 10 years, but it's also an awareness that Netflix wouldn't have existed without how good it was. So I think that sure. X-Men is doing that especially with the finale setting up so much, mm-hmm. but time will tell how that feels in two years. I, I, I feel what both of you are saying. I guess my only pushback is we've, we've said this before. If something is just standout phenomenal, regardless of what it is, people are going to tune in. So like, like you said with Game of Thrones, most people had no idea about the Song of Fire and Ice sure. and all that. It wasn't until people were like, yo, you need to see this. I think that that is, I'm not, I'm not, and I do understand there's a little bit of recency bias, mm-hmm. but I think that, the name both Loki and Daredevil, again, within our circle, mm-hmm. things like that, people know who those characters are, sure. and then they cared enough to look. Sure. 
I think X-Men just because of what the name X-Men means, period. So people immediately thinking about Wolverine. Yeah. Everybody's got a favorite mutant or has at least heard of one of them. I think that that had a little bit more of the general mass appeal draw, even if it is animation, because people were having those water cooler moments and talking about it. Now, I just didn't see crossover from people like that don't talk about this stuff. A lot of that are really like, like deep into it, right? Like, like where... Like my brother, who's a big fan of pop culture and more so where like I always bring out my friend John Pinto who doesn't know what, oh, there's a new Furiosa coming out. Like he, the, my brother knows what movies are coming out. And he knows this too. And, and he probably knows about X-Men 97 and he likes the X-Men. But I don't believe he's watched it. And I think I've told him that it was really good. It's just like the, the I wonder the interest of the mainstream media, uh, mainstream media, excuse me, mainstream uh, fan, uh, fans, or just like you know, the average, the average movie goer, pop culture watcher, how much a crossover it clearly did well. It was one of their highest rated shows, but as far as what metric, I don't know. I I guess the thing that's interesting is because while you say that, I feel like on the opposite end, I I, I did see a bunch of people that I have never heard speak on any of this like my sister being one even though she's a screenwriter herself she knows everything that's going on in yeah. there she's seen all of the mcu movies but she doesn't care and then all of a sudden she was like did you see this it was hitting me up but again but your, sister, that, but your sister's in the industry which i understand that i was yeah. going to continue with yeah. then on top of that like homies that i haven't talked to really since college or high school same thing they give they only care about sports that's their entertainment were they x-men fan like, but were they x-men fan as as kids They've the, the seen night. it one way or okay. the other. Okay. Some of them that fans also is tricky. The they... 90s, you know, planting a seed 30 years later, where yeah. it's like, I don't think the average person knew who Daredevil was. And then the show took off. But that's my But that's my point. I think that if this, look, first of all, if this was a live action show and it was written the same way it was and it played the same way it was, it, it would it would be 10 times even bigger than it, than it was. And there's nothing, look. I agree with that. And as Adam, and, and that's, if Dare, and, and the opposite of that, if Daredevil had been an animated show written the same way, same emotions, and as fantastic as it was, wouldn't have crossed over the same way it did uh, for Netflix. It just it just wouldn't. Some people, fairly or unfairly, I think more so on the unfairly, won't watch animated because they think it's for kids, and it isn't. It's animation, clearly this show is for everyone. But it does transfer over to that, that to a lot of people, they think, oh, animation, oh, Disney Plus, oh, it's for kids. This show is for everybody. This show was for everybody, but it just – that's it, it, getting off track, though, in the, in the fact that it was a phenomenal show, and it should, for the quality, be in the conversation for sure. And I love that we all agree top three out of 100 shows. Yeah. Like, there are so many Marvel-based shows, and this feels very cleanly in that top three, which just feels just great in the present yeah. day. Yeah. Because I would argue that some of the other ones that would maybe be in the conversation, like say a WandaVision, yeah, I was going to say that too. stellar through, but then like didn't quite stick the landing. I and that, see, but you is, and I are different on that. I loved the ending because I, I, I yeah. did, but the, people's most complaints were we were yes. doing all this really cool stuff, yes. and then you gave me kind of a standard Marvel fight in, in, in like kind of in the middle mm -hmm. of it before we got back to really wrapping it up solidly, and that being something enough that people get pulled out of it. I've, I've heard a number of people go, I was on board. And then the fight kind of took me out of it. And then, like, I kind of like what they said at the end there, but like, they they took it down. Yeah, it's fair. Tier. Totally fair. And I and there's there's other ones that played pretty well, but those this is going to be one, regardless of uh, recency bias or not. I think it's going to be in the conversation for a while. The question is going to be whether or not they can stick the landing on season two, and that is what goes from in the same way that you mentioned the bear before, like. The Bear was a great season one. And you're like, okay, it's season one. What can you do for season two? And they said, hold my beer. Here it is. And, and man, that show got even better. It was they even said, hold my seven fishes. Yeah, right. It was even better. Um, so now the question is without Bo DeMeo there, can they do it? Time question. will tell. Time will tell. I, uh, yeah. I personally think that the outline he'd laid out and the vision he had for it is going to allow. I'm more worried about season three. Uh, right. And I'm not. I'm not worried about uh, like the team they hire. I'm more worried about Vision. will it feel like a shift in tone? Like because yeah. all the writers I've talked to, all the directors I've talked to, they are just as passionate as any of us. They are ride or die X Men fans, the writers and directors alike. But if you've got a vision that goes to a certain point and then you le you change the leader, it doesn't really matter how much everyone else is dedicated. If hopefully whoever the new leader is is, but that's what we won't know until season three. Well, let me give you an example. This is again bringing up my brother. Um, he was talking about he Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. 
just came out, right? And I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. Um, but my brother hated it. Hated it. And he said, this is such a different movie in tone from the first one. He's like, that can't be Jason Reitman. I go, it wasn't. It wasn't him. Um, he produced it, but he wasn't directing it. A And Grant is not a director, but it's a showrunner, vision there is now. It's not to say that whoever they bring in to to show run the next one won't have a very similar take and won't continue that tone. But it's certainly it's certainly a, uh, a concern. I, I mean, that was one of my favorite shows of all time. Community greatly suffered from losing their showrunner. Mm -hmm. Another one of my favorite shows of all time, The Boondocks. Greatly yeah. suffered. From Dexter. The show Dexter. Dexter. Oh, I was gonna Dexter. say Dexter's Dexter's big season one. four or whatever. After one, four. After off. four. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, he, came, he came back. He, he came back for the last season. Yeah. Was it too little, too late? I never saw it. I was scared. It, it was. It was. It was much better. It was much better. Okay, and it, but it was. It was a. It was a way to close it out. But yeah. But but yeah. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. It's it's one of those things that again, if you want to go to sports, sometimes it's as little. It's something as little as a coaching change yeah. where all the talent is still there. But there's a different, and they're maybe running the same plays, but there's a different energy in the room. Yeah. And, and, that and that's energy, what I do want to. Go ahead. I was going to say, I do want to credit the rest of the team because I do feel Absolutely. like everyone we've talked to, any interview you see, Bo DeMeo is obviously the one online and mm -hmm. the one being you know credited because he is the showrunner. But every single person I've talked to that's been involved at all is probably the biggest X-Men fan I now know. Like they're yes. all in that top 20 conversation. Right. And I think Marvel deserves credit for hiring every tier right. at that level of zeal. So sorry to cut you off, Winston, but I do think all the... The, the team leaders were also crazy zealots. Yeah. It's just a matter of how that's going to work when they collaborate under a new code. Well, here's another difference, too, when you want to look at something like Game of Thrones, right? Where Game of Thrones, the quality definitely dipped on the on the show once the books ran out, right? So, And that happens sometimes, too. When, or look at look at The Hobbit when there was they tried to stretch one book into three movies. Or you look at uh, the Fantastic Beasts when you tried to just take whatever it was and condense it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But this is based off of comics that pre they, they already exist. They, they, it's just a matter of adapting those comics that are already there. They did that throughout this entire season. So as long as they have people, like you said, Corey, who really know the material, understand the material, understand the characters, which they seem to do, they, they, they've, got, they've got the blueprint for success. I agree with that. Um, so that's it, guys. That's our that's our topic as far as X Men goes. Now I ask you guys: Do you think that it is? I'm going to ask you guys the very same question. I hope that everybody answers this one: of whether or not you think it's the best MCU or best Marvel show, rather MCU or Marvel, uh, and is the best season. Please comment because I'll tell you what the the old YouTube has done lately, and I don't know if you people have been seeing this. I learned it recently too. YouTube changed their al algorithm, folks. Um, again, oh yeah, I just learned the old one. Yeah, they changed it again. So, and it's and it doesn't it doesn't benefit creators. Um, so w the way that it helps is if you comment, if you like more. So I know we've been saying that forever, but be part of the conversation and go back and forth with us. Talk to us about this. It helps very much so because then it tells the algorithm that you actually like to see it, and that way it'll recommend this show to you. You're like, how oh, come it doesn't get recommended? Because it's doing silly things these days, but. I'll tell you who's not doing silly things, and that is both AG1 and my wife is on the show. That's right. I'm going to have my wife. She's going to be on the show right now telling you guys about Mac Weldon. If you have people ask, when did your wife come out on the show? Well, you're going to hear her right now. I'll tell you about Mac Weldon and AG1. Here you go. Okay. So I love Mac Weldon. I have been obsessed with them, and I'm not even going to tell my wife. I'm going to call my wife right now just to show you guys how much I love Mac Weldon. Here you go. Hey. Did you just call me? I did. So I'm, I'm telling the audience about Mac Weldon. I want you to say a few words about what you've noticed so far with me wearing Mac Weldon. They fit your body really well. Flattering. The materials that they use are high quality. They're well made, not cheap. See? They're just really flattering to a man's physique and especially yours. Yeah, well, these are classy. These, this looks classy. It makes you feel good. It's The, the fit's good. I feel good when I'm wearing them. I get a, a confidence boost when I'm wearing them. And it's it's like, it's not flashy. You know, it's just like, it's classic and it feels like it's always in style. Yeah, they are. Too. They're classic, yeah. classic pieces. They're yeah. like staple pieces. And it's regular. It looks like regular clothes, but they just look better. Yeah. I mean, like they had that, uh, I, had, I had got, they gave me some sweatpants. They gave me that polo. The I mean, those yeah. pants that I really, I really I like think, those pants. I think it's really great for the casual professional. Yes. Who doesn't want to be just 
you know, really like ragged jeans and t-shirt, but still kind of casual and comfortable. That's yeah. it's a good good for the casual professional. So it's right. not fancy and it's not it's not overdressed, but it's still you look like you don't want to look like you rolled out of bed. Yeah, well there you go. All right, thank you, honey. Bye. She had no idea I was going to do that, and that's what she said. So if you guys, you want to get a timeless look with modern comfort from Mack Weldon, you got to go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your first order. We got to use that code big thing. Mack Weldon, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com. Use that promo code big thing. You will thank me. I'm telling you, I love Mack Weldon. I'm going to be shopping at Mack Weldon for a very, 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 very long time. I promise you that. Let's talk about our sponsors today, AG1. I have to have a supplement that has high quality, and that is why for the last two and a half, three years now, I've been drinking AG1. Unlike many supplement brands, AG1 conducts relentless testing to set the standard for purity and potency. It's because quality for AG1, it's not a buzzword. It's a commitment, and it is backed by expert-led scientific research, high-quality ingredients, industry-leading manufacturing, and rigorous testing. Each step of the process, AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. I know that I can definitely trust every time and every scoop that is AG1. They obsess over product quality. They obsess over it. That's great. The standards of manufacturing partners and sustainable practices is all super important to them. I take care of my health, and the reason why is because it shouldn't be complicated. And AG1 simplifies this by making it so there aren't a million different pills and capsules to keep track of. Just one scoop of AG1, you mix it in water every day. The ingredients are heavily researched for efficiency and quality, and I love that every scoop also includes vitamin C and zinc to support my immune health. Partner with AG1 for so long because they make such a high quality product that I genuinely look forward to drinking every day. So if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, start with AG1. Try AG1. You get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com slash big thing. That's drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. All right. Thank you to Mac Weld. Thank you to AG1. And thank you to my wife for making a, a cameo my here wife. today. My wife. So <laughs> if you want to help out the show and you're able to help the show, get yourself something wonderful. Get in these comments. Get into the description. That's where you're going to find those links and the special codes. And it helps us out more than you can possibly imagine. You know, we kept talking about Daredevil. And there is some Daredevil news. I'll tell you about it. Here it is. It's been rumored for a while, but now it's we're getting more of a confirmation here. Daredevil stars Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio have revealed that the original version of Marvel Studios Born Again featured no direct links to the Netflix series. Since 2021, Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock and Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin of Crime have shown up in various MCU TV shows. We've seen The Man Without Fear in Spider-Man No Way Home, She-Hulk Attorney at Law, and Echo with Wilson Fisk appearing in the latter and Hawkeye. However... These two haven't shared the screen since Daredevil wrapped up on Netflix six years ago. That's set to change in Disney Plus's Daredevil Born Again. And in an interview with TV Insider, D'Onofrio revealed that the revival originally featured no significant links to Daredevil. To which he says, It originally wasn't going to be at all, but now it's a lot. The actor said of crossovers between the two. Cox chimed in to say there's a lot of them, presumably meeting Foggy, Nelson, Karen Page, Bullseye, and The Punisher, who were all MIA in the previous iteration of Born Again. As for what led to the change, Cox said, I think it's the fans. I think it's the studio as well. That's a really fine balance to strike, he added. If you're going to remake a show and call it season one, and it was a successful show, and it was kind of beloved, then you got to do what people liked. But also, you've got to have a reason for remaking it. So you have to change it up a bit. And that's just a really fine balance to find. I think that they've done a beautiful job doing that. And hopefully the old fans, the OGs, will love it and also will pick up a few more fans on the way. As for what we can expect from his return as Daredevil, the actor said, it's still such a privilege to put that suit on and to still be the age that I'm at and still be able to play a superhero. I don't take that for granted at all. My knees are a little bit more sore. My back and neck are struggling a little bit more. My neck and my back. And <laughs> and they'll have to pry it off me at some point. It sounds like Marvel Studios has done the right thing with Daredevil Born Again. And all signs currently point to it being the series that Daredevil fans have been waiting for. Still, can't help but wonder what the previous iteration of the show looked like. I don't know. Just how disastrous might it have been uh, if the original showrunners had been allowed to continue without Kevin Feige stepping in. Who knows? Um, I guess if you wanted to see a car crash, then maybe then that's exactly why they, they were 
talking about Ooh. that. But yeah, but I, I, that would have been a car crash. I mean, that would have been such a bad move. You, this goes back to a conversation, guys, that we've had many times on this show. That where you're like, okay, well, why are you making this decision? Are you just making this decision because you're trying to uh, appease people? Are you trying to um, just cater to people? Like, what do you what are you trying to do? And like, why would you why would you change this when, as Charlie Cox said, here's a show that was super popular. It only stopped on Netflix because of the whole Ike Perlmutter thing and other things were happening between the MCU and and it was just a bit of confusion and it was and it got it it, it wasn't yanked because the fans didn't care about it anymore. It was yanked because of stuff that was going on internally. So when you try to do this whole new thing, well, it's multiverse versions, and everyone's like, "Why? You did it right!" And and then you see that version of what they did with Kingpin in Hawkeye, and you're like, "Who's that supposed to be?" And then, you know, even in, I thought Charlie Cox was good in, in She-Hulk. I really did. But it was anybody who was involved in that particular tone, not fair, but it's not the Daredevil that we saw. So the same thing. Good on them for saying, you know what? It's time to look at it. And I think, Corey, you said this a, a long time ago. It's, it's, I think you should be more thankful saying, okay, at least they, did, they, they stopped. They looked at it. They said, this is not what we want. This is not what the fans want. Reset. We got to. We lose some money because it was stuff we already shot, and it's not working out. I would rather lose the money and shoot something quality. Are you on the same page, Corey? Yeah, you can only come back once. I always say, like, you can only release a movie the first time once. All these yeah. director's cuts and other editions. It's hard because if you've got a movie come out, that's what people are basing the experience off of. And I and I do think this is kind of the Iron Man two example on TV, where in Iron Man, all the Easter eggs felt like they were. A little more in the back burner. They were exciting for fans, but I always talk about the the Captain America shield. In the first Iron Man, it's in the background. Sure. In the second Iron Man, he uses it to change the levels of an experiment he's doing, and it felt literally forced. And to me, it seems like there are people that that's right. That was a forced pun, but it seems like to me there are actual objective uses of multiverse, and then there's also suits that see it as an opportunity to just do, well, we can do whatever we want, just use these actors because it's the multiverse. That's exactly and this right. to me sounds like they were going, well, let's keep these actors because people like them, but let's make this Spin City-esque show, which I'm one of the people, I, I do like She-Hulk, and I do think that it would have been a fun show, but I would much rather have one season of Netflix's Daredevil Tone show than five seasons of something like that is just fun. I want I want some things to be gritty and grounded, and I'd, I'd love to have you know, more like that, but not at the cost of Daredevil and not using the actors in a different way. So this to me feels like there was at one point a great moment at the end of phase three where they realized, oh, multiversal, we can do infinite things. And they had that weird stockbroker, Wall Street, Silicon Valley mindset of infinite growth, infinite growth, like every streamer thought it was going to grow forever. And they were like, let's just plug in these things. And now we're entering a contraction. And in the contraction, they're going, what made people love these characters? What made this work? Let's do more of the thing that made us love them, not more of the thing that's going to potentially sell but alienate the viewers that got us here in the first place. Yeah. Winston? I think Koi kind of hit the nail on the head that I'm going to not say it's traditional name because this is a show that we see kids on uh, watching. But um, you know how people in the stock industry and in Silicon Valley are known for uh, 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 booger sugar, if you will. Sure. That's what it kind of felt like as far as ideas of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then throw, and then throw daredevil in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It will make money and money on money on money on money. Let's go. <laughs> right. That's what the MCU has felt like yeah. recently. Yeah. Not just the MCU. I would make the argument. All of the industry is that that's why you end up with a $300 million budget for indiana jones right. when harrison ford can bar barely use his knees sure so like i i think there has been a refocus on when the art is good mm -hmm. and remembering that it is art then the money comes and i think that that's what exactly what koi said they said okay why did this work and then they went back to the drawing board as far as doing that yeah um and i feel like that's what we're expecting out of deadpool as it comes around the corner mm -hmm. in a couple of months and what they have been doing with all of these reshoots for, you know, Captain America for, for like the Thunderbolts that just started up, I, they really were like, okay, we got to focus up here because we just let anybody that pitched something just go for it. Yeah. And I think that it's also a matter of, like you guys both said, I think that they were trying to like cut corners, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, well, we don't need Foggy. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't need camera. We don't, we don't need them. It's, it's okay. 
They, nobody, nobody, that's a different show. These are these are the multiverse version of them. As long as we have Trevor loves Charlie, you can see like the studio version of everybody loves Charlie. Let's do let's let's have Charlie and Vincent. Everybody loves Vincent and Opera. Let's do that's fine. As long as we have them, it, it it's okay. And then they said that a couple of times. I think even Feige had said, yeah, these are not those versions. And everyone was like, what? It went over like a fart in an elevator. It was like, and it, and it's confusing optically for the day to day audience. I think that's yeah, the biggest yes, thing yes. to me is. If you're someone that doesn't follow this, like the gospel we yes. do, and you're just like, oh, Daredevil's back, and then you sit down, and that's why my kickback from yeah. Spin City. I love Spin City. I'm not knocking Spin City. Is that what they but said? But you keep saying you keep saying that. Is that the is that they said that it was going to be Spin City? They, they said it was a lawyer based comedy that was a procedural lasting Ew. 30 minutes running 22 Ew. episodes. To Ew. me, that's Spin City, Ew. right? Like. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. But, they yeah. said that about Daredevil? Well, originally. Yeah, that was, originally. That was, that what, was the original. What, what, it was going to be 22 episodes, 30 minutes, uh, a, a comedy lawyer show. I think that that's why they were they teeing him up the way that they were teeing him up in She-Hulk to, to go into that. And then – w- Yeah. <laughs> I agree. With, I was just going to be like, didn't we – just try that with she hole Right. I, I well, think they were going to be like a companion show. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what that I will say this. If She-Hulk would have went over well with the fans, they would have stuck with this. Um, now, what I don't want is things not to be experimental because I do think you experiment with new characters, right? My only concern of this contraction is, as you guys know, I'm a big Eternals guy, but even the characters that started phase one would have been considered experimental. So right. taking out the Koi in the comments loves everything and Koi liked Eternals so he doesn't have a right to say anything. Take those people out of the equation. Iron Man, experiment. Cat, sure. experiment. Avengers, experiment. So I don't think you experiment with Daredevil. Right. I don't think you go, right. I'm a guy that liked one through three. I'm going to sit down and watch Daredevil. What is happening? But if you want to make something, She-Hulk didn't work for a lot of people, but those people got to see something they liked. They tried something new. other shows to play with. They tried yeah. something new. With, with She-Hulk, they tried something new. I didn't like it, but they tried something new. And if Daredevil doesn't need something new, it is, it, you know, that's the old, if it ain't, if it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Yeah. I, you know, again, Christian, with with the 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 building out I've been doing with the YouTube channel, the yeah. main thing that there's there's two big differences because Koi, you mentioned phase one. I'm in phase one right now, right? That means I can literally throw whatever at the wall and see what sticks, right. and the thing that works, you run with it. So for Christian, you had a situation of with his channel, he was doing big thing regular, he was doing Sith Council, he was doing capes and cows, he was doing all of that, and then he just tried because he had something set the UAP stuff and look what that actually became versus there have been other things that you put up here. Like we thought the pork chop sandwiches, Koi reacting to that was hysterical. Right. And that video ate a turd. A- ate a turd. So like, yeah. And so that's the thing. The pizza can, reviews. <laughs> so you can try new stuff if you're situated, but you cannot sabotage the things that work. Right. Otherwise, your 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 paycheck is gone 100 and, and, and if we start like. talking about star wars on this show i'm gonna be confused but i'm gonna try but i think that would make the audience go like i guess they have capes they're more like well, cloaks but while we're here well using that same example right it's like when we we knew that the three of us we knew that we liked talking the audience liked the chemistry when we were doing the rewatch but there was only so long we could do the rewatch because the rewatch what people would do they would tune in for the big one as spider-man was coming out People would watch it. It's like, okay, well, we like what you guys are talking about, but I'm not. I'm not going to go see the new Toy Story movie, so I don't know if I'm going to watch that Toy Story rewatch. So, like, well, if they like watching us talk about stuff, and we like talking about the comic book movies, and you guys can teach me stuff, and I can ask questions, and we can do. Why don't we just do something else? And we call it Capes and Cows, and that's what we did, and we've stayed consistent on that because you listen to what the audience likes, and that's what the audience wanted from Daredevil. They wanted what they liked. And they gave it back to him. So hopefully it works out. We'll see. But I ask you guys, what do you think? I can't imagine that that there's going to be anyone in the comment section, maybe there is, who says, I didn't like the Daredevil series the way it was. They should have went with the Spin City version. If you are one of those people, check your... No, no, I'm Uh, sorry. Let me know why. Why do you think that you... That, that this is the better version than what they're going to do. So put your comments in there. Tell us what you think. Uh, we got more to talk about, but I will say, as I mentioned beforehand, I'm always excited to talk about our really wonderful sponsors. I was lucky to get both Nutrafol and Fume on board. They continue to come back because you guys keep checking them out. And here's a little bit more about them. Let's talk about some habits because you guys know you got some habits and there's nothing better than beating a bad habit with a good habit and we've talked about fume before you guys you guys know we've talked about fume uh, we've we've had fume 
on and we're glad that they are back it's great and mark riley is the one who's really been talking this thing up and i can't wait for him to, to talk about it even more so on the show um when he's on for uap and he just talking about how flavorful it was better than he thought it feels very fresh and it's like a refreshing herbal tea but if it was vapor uh it, it was it, you can look at like sticky soda it's got non it's 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 really good it's it's well weighted it's perfectly balanced it's extremely fun to fidget with and it really look at the, the the wood itself it's it's great you can start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash big thing and getting the journey pack today fume is giving listeners to the show 10 percent off when they use that code big thing to help make starting the good habit much easier because it's you get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. It comes with adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts. It's great. They use flavored air instead of vapor. The fume is completely, completely natural, by the way, instead of electronics. And there's no, this is the reason why I decided people are like, well, why, why would you, why would you get involved with something like this? Why? Because they don't use harmful chemicals. They use delicious flavors. And that's why I got involved. Fume works. They're great. So thank you again to Fume for sponsoring the show. Let me, guys, let me tell you guys about Nutrafol. I'm going to tell you guys about Nutrafol. I'm very excited to tell you about Nutrafol. I've told you about Nutrafol many times over, and I've gotten people, and Nutrafol even said, like, we're, we're back because the audience is listening, and they're they're, they're checking it out, and they're, they're it, it's working. Because if you didn't know, did you know that 80% of men are going to experience hair thinning in their lifetime? Because it's normal. It doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of it with Nutrafol. What is it? Well, it's a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. A lot of times you blame genetics, but there are multiple things at play when it comes to hair thinning. So what is Nutrafol? It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. You can take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. And for a limited time, Nutrafol is going to offer our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping. When you go to Nutrafol.com slash men, you got to enter that promo code, big thing. You can find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men. You got to enter that code, big thing. Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code, big thing very excited to have them on board all right thank you to Nutrafol and fume happy to have them on board and happy that people have been trying them out and, and breaking uh breaking bad habits and also feeling good about yourself so there you go okay all right so before we get to anything else this just jumped up on the radar and it says ms marvel season two reportedly being discussed uh, there's also an update on Nova. Will it be Sam Alexander or Richard Ryder? Here is Mark Cassidy over comic book movie. We have some rumored updates on two potential Disney Plus MCU shows here with Ms. Marvel reportedly being discussed at Marvel Studios and more details on the studio's plans for Nova. So far, Loki is the only Disney Plus Marvel-based series that got a second season, but we're now hearing that a sophomore run for another popular show might be in the cards. According to Daniel Rickman, a second season of Ms. Marvel is being discussed, but a final decision has not been made. We hear that Kamala Khan is being, we have heard that Kamala Khan is being positioned as a major player in the MCU going forward, so a second season of her solo show would make sense. That said, Khan's big screen debut, The Marvels, massively underperformed, which might well influence Marvel Disney's decision. Somewhat controversially, for a longtime fan of the character, Khan was revealed to be a mutant in season one finale, retconning her inhuman status from the comic books. This new origin soon carried over to the page, though she also retains her inhumanness, with Khan becoming the latest member of the X-Men. And this is the direction Villani would like to see her character go if she does get the opportunity to reprise the role. During a 2023 interview with comicbook.com, Villani was asked which super team she'd like to see Kamala thrown in with, and she says on the big screen, X-Men. I don't think that's a bad answer. I think the X-Men is so cool, and I think it marks her as legitimate mutant, and all the naysayers can no longer say nay. Rickman also shared an update on the Nova series. The insider has heard that the young lead currently being sought is actually in his 20s, which means the character could turn out to be Richard Ryder and not the modern incarnation of the space-faring hero Sam Alexander. Okay, so the first thing I will say, I have no idea who Nova is. So 
to me, the story here is Kamala Khan and uh, and Ms. Marvel. Now, as we know, and if you've seen my out of the theater action, you'll know I was not a fan of the Marvels. I thought it was a very not not good movie. I thought it was handled poorly. I thought that it was there was singing and dancing and 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 nonsense happening in that movie. However, everyone, most people, I would say majority, cannot deny that Kamala Khan was the was the the, the scene stealer. She was the the absolute. She was just the best part of the whole thing because everything that made her so endearing in that show was what popped in that movie. Now, I liked the show, and I always say many times over that the reason I liked the show was the stuff more so about the family and the things that they did and the family dynamic and how it played into it. I'm all for a season two. I think that I would much rather see a season two than the Young Avengers. I think that would be a colossal error to do that right now. I don't think that they're in a position to do that. I think having her as part of the MCU in general is a great idea. I think put her in as many movies as you can, making her part of the X-Men eventually. Eventually, if you lead into it and like any other character, she earns it. She's <coughs> wonderful. She's wonderful. So I would absolutely love this plan if this is the case. I think season two, absolutely. Winston, tell me what you think about that and then explain to me who the hell Nova is. <laughs> uh, I think we can all agree that she, even if you are one of those people that absolutely could not stand the Marvels, that from all the times that Iman Vellani has shown up as Kamala Khan, she has absolutely crushed. And I haven't heard a single person say anything bad about her, her performance, her character, anything like that. So I think that that, um, I think that that's a smart choice if you're going to do that, especially knowing you want her to be one of the vehicles in which we continue this journey. I think that that's a smart, smart thing to do and allows you to, to be honest with you, if the aim is for her to ultimately get, uh, be the leader or one of the leaders of the Young Avengers, if you wanted to bring in that show some of those other heroes as a means to further establish them, I think that that's something you could in theory do. Um, just to kind of give uh, them a little bit of credence here or there and, and really kind of solidify that. Um, so I think it's smart. I think that that's, that's a good hand to play. Now, as far as Nova, easiest way to describe it, um, and, and I know more about Sam than I do Richard, so I'll let, I'll let uh, Koi speak on that, but think essentially Green Lantern minus the construct. Okay. So Space Cop, um, you know, with the whole force behind mm. them, uh, protecting the, the galaxy as a whole, uh you energy based so like obviously green lantern makes like you know shields and shoots lasers and stuff but the difference there is if he's like i'm gonna make a a slide he can make a slide right. nova doesn't do constructs he okay. just has raw power using energy blasting stuff flying through space all that kind of stuff okay um so koi you know when this is announced as far as if they do, they do indeed announce that they're gonna do a season two of the Marvels or, or Ms. Marvel rather. Now we've talked about them trying to hold back also and conserving their budget and the show as much as, as endearing as it was, it wasn't a ratings buster by any means. So is it a good play to keep it on? And if so, is it because you want to give, uh, I'm on the, the, the spotlight in order to keep her relevant in the MCU. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd argue that it's basically an opportunity to allow her the – it's a course correct. It allows her to be the yeah. leader of the Young Avengers when they get to it. But I always thought they would use the shows as kind of a, a backdoor pilot to the movies. And I and we've talked about that with the X-Men before, how we think it'd be a great way to have either special editions or shows or whatever leading to the movie debut of a team. But I don't think we're ready for Young Avengers yet. So what better way than do what they kind of should have done – Put Nova maybe on a show. Uh, I personally don't think the budget would be the right appropriate level for cosmic stuff on TV, but maybe they're doing something I don't know. Maybe. But if you've got her like on a show and then some of those characters come into play, you get to learn them on that scale. And then the Young Avengers is the theatrical debut. You do, Neil, do, do need that bridge to make it work because I don't think we're there yet. And that scene in the Marvels with uh, Kate Bishop was amazing. More moments like that would, I think, instill a bit of faith, and I think it'd be worth the cost of the show because of how charming Amal and Vellani is. Whether or not it was a ratings buster or not, I think they're investing in her or they wouldn't have changed the comic continuity. They have a 10-year a Amon Vellani plan that's big enough to have Kevin Feige do his only ask in history, 
which is make her a mutant. There's no way you don't invest in that further by giving her a shot. I agree. I, I agree with you. And the other thing too that it, that goes a long way is that she is a fan of this stuff. I mean, that's what she was. She was a fan before she was even in this. And to, so when she's talking about X Men and she's talking about all the things, like she's this isn't just someone's like, oh, I'd like to be in this. She's someone who knows the lore, who knows where the character could potentially go, and and you can see it when she plays it. So I I, I root for her. I hope that this is a season two. I really did enjoy season two. I'd like to see where it continues on, and I'd like for her to get more of a spotlight, and I agree. I think that the Young Avengers right now, if they're going to do it, I've said it, I stick to it. I think that if they're going to do it at all, you should do it as a TV show. I don't think it's... I think that the receipts are there right now that you're setting yourself up. If you put that out anywhere in the next year or two, unless you start putting out hit after hit after hit, you're setting yourself up for a disappointment until... You can prove your your actors and giving them a season a season. Not prove your actors. That's not that's not fair. Give them more, give them more um, screen time so the audience that maybe is on the fence about them can see the potential. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So we move on with other. It was we mentioned Nova, and I still don't know who the hell that is. But if you, you Nova, and you mentioned all these other characters, someone that I do know, even though I didn't get his name up top right, is Ghost Rider, and they kept talking about Ryan Gosling. So how about this story? All right, Ryan Gosling responds to Kevin Feige endorsing him for Ghost Rider. Now, this is Josh Wilder. Talking about his role in The Fall Guy alongside Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling responded to Kevin Feige, giving him the thumbs up as the MCU's Ghost Rider and revealed whether he's heard anything since then. Barbie and The Fall Guy star Ryan Gosling remains a firm fan favorite to play the MCU's Johnny Blaze in a future Ghost Rider project. However, as we write this, there's no clear indication that Marvel Studios plans to bring the spirit of vengeance back to theaters. Supernatural stories like Werewolf at Night and the upcoming Agatha All Along and even Ironheart may set the stage for an eventful debut. But is Gosling still interested? Josh Horowitz, our buddy, asked him, about getting the seal of approval from Kevin Feige, and he said, that was a magical moment. I told Josh I would like to play Ghost Rider. He found Kevin Feige, he corners him, does an interview with him, and when he says, I would like this, all the lights go off. As for whether there's been any real moment on that front, a cagey Gosling responded, I don't know. When Emily, <laughs> when Emily interjected and she said she didn't expect him to sign up for a superhero project, the Academy Award nominee told her, I'd love to. It'd be amazing. Come be in Ghost Rider. Marvel Studios has been sitting on the rights for a character for years and allowed Marvel Television to use the Robbie Reyes versions in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a brief spell. Since then, rumors have persisted Johnny is being lined up to make his MCU debut. Gosling has expressed interest in a possible superhero movie role and more specifically the spirit of vengeance on a few occasions. Asked about that last year, which is what Horowitz refers to in the video, Feige says, hey man, if Ryan wants to be Ghost Rider, Gosling's unbelievable. Ryan's amazing, and I'd love to find a place for him in the MCU. The actor has previously said he's turned down many superhero roles, but he declined to name them. He said it didn't matter. I was right for it, but I'd love to do it. Clearly, he's waiting for the right character, but will it be Ghost Rider? We're going to all have to wait and see. Um, I will say this. And give big props to my buddy Josh Horowitz and go and check out his show, Happy, Sad, Confused, which is amazing. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, this is something that it's interesting because I think he'd be phenomenal in this role. I think he'd be phenomenal. This is a perfect choice, perfect casting. I will say, in the same way that I said about um, the Young Avengers, it depends on what kind of budget you're looking for for a Ghost Rider movie. If you're doing a big $150 million Shoot, man! hundred. Look at Fall Guy. If you're doing a hundred and twenty million dollar movie, a Ghost Rider, then don't sign it. If you want to go back and you want to scale it down, you want to try to do something like, like the almost like the Crow, like that kind of movie, like something like so, like like a fifty million dollar movie with Ryan Gosling and Ghost Rider, which Marvel Studios will never do. But if you did something like that, sign me up. But if not, then put him in some multiverse stuff. Let him play around a little bit too. But a $150 million movie, I, I think Fall Guy proves you can't take that risk. Which is sad. Yes. I still haven't seen it. It's a good movie. Been, oh, I loved I've it. Busy, yeah, me too. Everything I've me heard too. is how good that movie is. So and good. It just didn't do it. And, and sadly, it wasn't one of those things where people... 
were like, hey, we were just really busy this weekend and everybody kept talking it up. So they miraculously figured it out. If to my knowledge, they just have not recovered since that opening weekend. Right. No. It was yeah. Just, it has not picked up legs. I that's the, that was a problem. Remember, Coy, when we talked about it, I said, I love your enthusiasm there about that. It could have legs. It's so good. It's a good movie. The problem is when it landed, it landed in the yeah. beginning of the movie season. It landed so, and, summer, and, summer movies. Every week after has been like another yes. thing that is the similar audience. Right. Like apes, it cannibalized. Like there's no way apes is going to lose to it. Yeah. It's not going to find legs. And then if isn't exactly its demo, but that's two weeks in. Still tickets. And then Furiosa is definitely its demo. So if it could have kind of bounced back, then like so weeks two and four in the brackets did not do it any like it. There's I don't know. It's too late. It's relevant to this guy, but it's relevant to this conversation also, because if you look at something like Ghost Rider, if you put that movie out in the summertime, it's a bad move. But if you make it for 50 or 60 million dollars and you put it out in like October, you know, then you got a shot of it being like, oh, how about in the same way that remember back when like Wesley Snipes' Blade came out. Which he has been rumored, by the way, we should probably talk about that also. We talked about it on the show with Brett the other day. But like it was um, when that movie came out in, was it 98, I think? When that movie came out, that movie was what that movie cost $30 million to make or whatever it was in the scale of that. Which today would be like 70. So therefore, like right. a comparable thing right. to what you're describing. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my point. My point is to do like a 60, you know, 50, 60 million dollar movie with Gosling. That's with that kind of budget. He's really all that you need. You look at you. You can find other people in the not high priced talent, but very good talent. Put them around them. Make a new star out of somebody. Giving them a big role uh, alongside Gosling and 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 take a I, shot. I just uh, Gosling has the depth, so he could do it. I just think that that would personally be a waste of his talent. I oh. think that. I still stand by if you're going to put Gosling in the MCU, you hand him Sinister. I'm sorry. Sinister has this certain kind of charisma and seeing Gosling play a villain, which isn't necessarily something we've seen before. I think that would not only be fun to do, I think he would crush that. And then you could like, again, in the nature of mm -hmm. you're going to do a smaller movie anyway and all that. Why not put a Jensen Echols in there who like is enough of a name to those in the industry, but he isn't a household name yet. I think he has the gun, the gumption to do that role. And, and could give us the gruffness because we saw him do it with Soldier Boy and everything else like that. I think that that, to me, is a better casting choice for Ghost Rider, but that's just me. All right. Well, we got. I, I personally yeah. think that there's a drive element to Ryan Gosling, and there's a lot of things that allow for us to see him this way. But we remember two weeks ago or whatever, he had that quote where he's like, I have kids now. I don't want to go to dark places. Right. I want to like be a happy. That's true. Ghost Rider is pretty dark. I don't think he's going to play Ghost Rider because I think he's in a place in his career where if he's going to do something superhero, he wants it to be fun. I think he'd be an ex exceptional Cyclops, man. I think uh, personally, I would love to see Norman Reedus or someone like that as Ghost Rider. I want someone that has like an undercurrent of darkness that looks like they like live on a motorcycle and you wouldn't trust them in a bar. I think there's an inherent levity to the modern Gosling that yeah. he wants to keep. And I'd rather see someone that doesn't cost as much Whereas I think you want to open a movie, you get an ensemble cast, you have Gosling as a fixture of that, give Cyclops his actual due, frame the X-Men around three or four big leads, and then support with supporting. But I, I think Ghost Rider doesn't need to be expensive, and I think Norman Reedus is more my type. So super quick, because I know we're changing the topic, but if that's what you're saying, then you don't give him Cyclops either. You give him Gambit, because then he gets to play. He gets to still be that charismatic, like, ladies' man, essentially. You guys are still I, looking Austin at... Austin Butler you're, all day. Yeah, I, I would say Butler. And the reason why, the reason why is not... I, I If you put Ryan Gosling as Gambit 15 years ago, 100%. But Ryan Gosling, even though the guy doesn't look like he ages... He's 40 years old, or whatever he is, too, right? And they're gonna want to be playing these these X-Men characters. They want to start them, they want to be to be young because they want them to go and they want them to last for a bit. Ryan Gosling's not gonna sign on to play Gambit for 10 or 15 years. And if he does, we're gonna see if sinister. Yeah, that's, that's well, that's I think that's a better I think it's a better shot. But okay, because Corey's the one that said he's gotta go. Hey, hey, you're, hey, you're the one that said you gotta go. Stop talking. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> let's go. We'll do one more story. And how about this one? All right, there's an MCU rumor roundup that we're going to close the show with, and that is Spider-Man 4 to feature an alien suit. Big updates on Midnight Suns and Young Avengers. Here it is. We're back with some more big Marvel Cinematic Universe updates as Josh Wilding over a comic book movie, including some big Spider-Man 4 news, including a certain costume, plans for Kate Bishop in Young Avengers and Beyond and Midnight Suns. 
Marvel Studios has been tasked by Disney, Disney's Bob Iger with getting back to quality over quantity. That's why moving forward, we're getting three movies per year and only two Disney Plus shows. We'd bet on Kevin Feige appearing at both the San Diego Comic-Con and D23 to share an updated multiverse saga slate, but some updates come our way today courtesy of scooper Daniel Rickman. We'll start with Spider-Man 4. That's supposedly set to begin shooting this fall, with the plan being for the movie to arrive in theaters as soon as fall 2025. It's a quick turnaround, but very much in line with the wall crawler's previous solo outings. Here's where things get interesting. Rickman adds that the piece of Venom left on Earth-616 at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home will play a role in the movie. Given what a dark place Peter Parker is likely to be in after his Aunt, Math, uh, Aunt May's death, and the fact the world has forgotten him, it makes sense. In other news, it's said that Marvel Studios' Young Avengers project will begin shooting at the start of 2025 with Haley Steinfeld tapped to play Kate Bishop in that and Avengers 5 Hawkeye Season 2 as well based on recent rumors. Finally, for you horror fans out there, we're hearing the current ideas is for cameras to start rolling on Midnight Suns as soon as Blade wraps production. In the MCU, there are several characters who can make up the Midnight Suns, including Doctor Strange, Clea, Black Knight, and the Man-Thing. However, with the next Avenger movies fast approaching, we're a little shocked Marvel Studios found room for them. One character we do expect to show up in the Oscar... It, one character we do expect to show up is Moon Knight. There have been some specific conversations. They were pleasant. The spilling of the details is that there are no details. We don't know if there's a second season, but we're talking about it, said Oscar Isaac. Whether... It's in a group, or maybe a great idea comes around for season two, or if it's a standalone film, whatever it could be. I think it's just approaching in that kind of way. It's the story first. Okay, so, Koi, we'll start with you here, man. Um, Koi, we'll start with you. So this is a lot, and I will start with asking you about the Young Avengers thing because we just talked about it. I still think not a smart play to do a movie. It seems like they don't give a crap what I think, and that's fair. Um do you Kevin, think we've talked about this? We've talked about this. They don't care. They don't care. And they might very well be right. And Haley Steinfeld is a star. She very well could. You say, hey, remember when you said that movie wasn't a good move? Well, it just made a lot of money. How are you feeling about that? Hmm. Stupid. Um, hmm. And I hope I'm wrong. I, I definitely hope I'm wrong. But what do you think? Where do, is, is Young Avengers the right play to make right now? I, I don't think right now, but I think if you do a season two of Miss Marvel, if you build out Kate Bishop's role in Hawkeye season mm -hmm. two, you basically make the season two's phase two leading to the next Avengers event. You go back to what works. You go back to phase one was using movies to build the Avengers. Use shows to build the young Avengers. We talked about how we assume Thunderbolts, Asterix is dark Avengers. We know the optics in the word Avengers. Yeah. It gets butts and seats. So what I would do is make these new characters, use the Vision show if it still exists, to introduce young Vision. Young Vision's, yeah. uh, Viv Vision's important uh, young Avenger. Use this element and Thunderbolts to implement this idea and kind of backdoor pilot a Young Avengers show four years down the line. But think about how many times they just mentioned Haley Steinfeld. That's three or four more appearances beforehand, at least two more appearances of Kamala Khan since her show. There's an opportunity to really grow them out. I think by the time we would get there, you might want it more. But I agree, if it was like part of their phase five in the next two years slate, bad move. I think down the line, not the worst idea. Yeah, it's a fair point. Um, it, as long as there's enough time to build. And Winston, definitely give me a little bit more on that if you want, but also to tie into the Spider-Man stuff. Um, I like what they're saying here as because it was like they set that thing up with Tom Hardy and it just was like, well, where's that going? And they have all these post-credit scenes that have gone nowhere for this to actually go somewhere and be relevant to the movie it was related to in the first place, I think makes sense, right? I think so. And I think especially we've talked about that we need a more contained street level Spider-Man. Street level doesn't mean you don't deal with some of his biggest stories. Right. And his his battle with his own anger and darkness dealing with the symbiote. And and then that ultimately branching off into uh, you know venom and however you decide to handle that, I think is is still a self-contained story where venom can be a world buster if he needs to be, but it really just stays within his own dark psyche of dealing with that. I think that and especially knowing he doesn't have anybody, part of mm -hmm. what gets him to fight the suit and realize it's not good for him is aunt may is mary jane is uh you know harry people in his life that he's like who am i becoming 
Right. This isn't okay. If he's all alone now, God, that is a real test of what am I actually made of? Um, and pissed to, off. And super pissed. I think that that would be a very good story. As far as the Young Avengers, I would have to venture a guess because we already know just from, from cast, casting announcements and, and news stories that like you've got Carl Lumley making a return in Captain America 4. So I think Elijah Bradley is probably going to show up again. I think that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think with Thunderbolts, because you've already established Kate has this loose connection to Yelena, I think you're going to see a little bit of stuff going on in Thunderbolts as well. I think Young Avengers is more around the corner than we realize, but I think that you're looking at a movie maybe in 2026 at best. Not you're not. It's nothing that's going to be right. happening anytime soon. But that gives that gives Koi that gives Koi's point of you know if they do green light Ms. Marvel because television moves faster, so they have Ms. Marvel yeah. and and Hawkeye. You got a shot, but I know I that see we, 20, 27, 28, 28 personally, but we're splitting hairs. That's similar yeah. time like where we're looking out to easily. So Koi, you know, before because we, we got to go. So uh, I want I obviously be miss if I don't hear you give your thoughts on the Spider-Man story and everything that was kind of reported in there. What, what stands out about that story? Bring on the black suit, but do not bring on Venom in the same movie. It is time we finally let the black suit be its own arc. I think that the Venom saga could be a three film journey. And how great would it be if he gets the black suit leading up to, or because of Secret Wars? We're uniquely positioned to have Secret Wars actually relate to the black suit. Mm. I'd love if Secret Wars comes first and he gets the black suit like he should and the extraterrestrial thing becomes terrestrial, causing the problems. Mm. But I'd love to see him actually have some time in the black suit where it's not immediately weaponized. I think a guy going through his young college time is one of the most disorienting times in, in anyone's life, right? What better way to implement the psychology of Venom, not externalized, internalized, mm. keep the black suit on, dude, while he's in college, and then maybe have him meet new friends and have him not trust them. Have him go through the turmoil a little bit before you just jump into Venom. I think a big part of Spider-Man 3's problem was they made Sam Raimi make Venom and they made the black suit rush in addition to Sandman. It should have been a red suit Sandman movie, but if you're going to try it again, black suit for at least a movie, I'd love to see a trilogy. Hmm. Well, how about that? We did it. We did our first New York show, Capes and Cows, and I tricked all you guys. We're actually in the room together. So... You thought that's it. Why, that's why Koi's all pixelated. That's right. Koi's pixelated. So, but we did in it. Real life. We made, we made, yeah, you just walk around pixelated. Yeah, that's, that's, that's his story, guys. He's always it's pixelated. My new look, guys. Yeah. Um, so this is Capes and Cows. We're very excited that you guys are joining us here today. I also wanted to, I didn't do this in the beginning. I wanted to thank everybody. We were able to build out the studio because I, as you saw in the link of this, we have that, the New York studio Amazon list. So many of you guys have contributed to it. I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to, I have all of the lists here. I'm going to read out that on, on Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to tell everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you, and read your names out. Um, but I wanted to thank my panel here today, starting with Winston A. Marshall. Winston, where can they find you? You can find me at the Swaggy Blurred on all the platforms. I just had a video go super viral over on Instagram. So that was fun. Um, and the the YouTube channel I'm building out, man, we're, we're on that drive. I'm um, just trying to get to 3,000 to start it off and get monetized. So do me a favor. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that. And then just watch a few of the videos, man. Show some love. Throw some comments. As Christian said, that's apparently super important. Uh, and other than that, you'll see me here every week. Coit. Uh, you can hunt me down at Koi Drondro, trying to grow the YouTube as well. And Winston's editing is top notch. Definitely check out his page. It's impressive, and it makes me jealous because that is a skill I'm working on having, and I'm very – it's inspiring, man. I, I definitely appreciate Thanks, what you're bro. doing over there. So check his page out, but also check mine out. I'm doing a weekly comic book news and reviewing all the comics I read the week before and previewing all the comics out that week and a weekly movie review. So I'm really trying to grow it out aggressively like we once did here. So Perfect. Me down good, there. good end. Good end. It's there. top notch. Perfect. So the other, the other, and Koi will be arguing about dishes in just a second. So we are <laughs> excited to be joined by the crew. We're excited to have the studio. Right now, I think we're at like, what do you say, Brett? 20%? 20, what would you say? 30. You say 30? 30%. We're at 30% right now, <coughs> trying to get to around 60 before this trip's over, and then we'll be back at 100 in, in June. So subscribe to the channel. As I said, I can't even... I had this whole long conversation today with Greg Alba also with how the algorithm and everything has changed. So when I tell you, comment, click the like button, share the videos, do all that. If you like watching this show, so that is what happens. That is what helps. Thank you for doing so. For Winston and Coy... I'm me. 
You're you. We'll see you later.